All right, guys, KB32 here, check it out. I am sitting in the Freedom Office, and, uh, well, I'm going to do, like, my own little narrative narration of, well, Joe Biden's speech last night. And, again, just to start off with, we know it's full of lies, which is one of the reasons he is the liar-in-chief. I mean, yeah, liar-in-chief. Uh, and he goes over the same thing, and it's it's just rhetorical. It's the same stuff that he always preaches at every one of these speeches. It's what he can stomach. And i got to be quite honest with you, it almost looked like he was falling asleep while giving this damn thing. So anyway, what I wanted to do is I have burned in some highlights. This, this video is only about the actual part of the speech. I've, I've taken and extracted all the cool parts. It's only about uh, six minutes long of him, but we're going to talk to me about me talking. In this first part, he talks about the NRA. Here we go. And we beat the NRA. You have no idea how intimidating they are to elected officials. The NRA was against it, which means the vast majority, the vast majority of Republicans in Congress couldn't even stand up and vote for it because they're afraid of the NRA. And <laughs> who is so scared of the NRA? I, I wish like hell that they would know that the NRA is not really the component that's behind the push to sue the shit out of everybody out there when they uh, infringe on our Second Amendment rights. Am I right or wrong? Tell me down below. Here we go. And the NRA and the vast majority of congressional problems voted against it, saving lives and keeping America safe. But guess what? We took on the NRA, and we're going to take them on again, and we won, and we will win again. I'm not sure why he thinks that it's a great thing to take on the NRA, because, again, like I said, they are only a small component. They're a huge moneymaker. They're a huge lobby. But I don't know of any uh, political person who is actually physically scared of the NRA. Gun Owners of Associations of America. That's my go-to branch. Stand by. I'm determined to ban assault weapons in this country. Determined. I did it once before, and I'll do it again. Oh, he's going to ban our assault weapons, which, and by definition, Congress has already determined that about half or 50% of the guns out there are considered assault-style firearms. Your Glock, uh, your uh, HK, your SIG. Even a pistol, anything that can uh, have a removable magazine that stores more than 10 rounds is considered to them to be an assault weapon. And he's, they don't want to take that away from you. Do you trust this guy? The guy that has weaponized the, uh, I don't know, FBI against Donald Trump? Uh, weaponized the IRS? Weaponized the ATF? Going door to door? My ass. This guy, and you see from the people behind him, they're all sitting and everything like, yes, uh, me, 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 me. Look at this jackass over here with his fucking fingers crossed. Excuse my French. And I'll do it again. For many of you home, I want to be clear. It's not about taking away anybody's guns. In fact, we should be treating responsible gun owners as examples how every gun owner should behave. But I support the Second Amendment, and I support the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment the rights granted by the Second Amendment are not unlimited. They're not unlimited. And for those brave right-wing Americans who say it's all about keeping America, keeping America as independent and safe, if you want to fight against a country, you need an F-15. You need something a little more than a gun. The rights provided to us by the Second Amendment are not unlimited. Well, no shit, Sherlock. We've heard this all of our lives since, what, 1938 with the National Firearms Act? You guys started limiting shit there, and I tell you what, I don't know. Man, I might like to have a cannon. It's kind of hard to pull around. If I want one, I want a Vulcan cannon. That's a cannon. Oh, God, please, Lord, if I have to hear the dear Kevlar vest thing one more damn time. Joe, the Second Amendment was not designed around deer hunting. Okay, it was designed about taking out tyranny, <laughs> right? Think again there, boss. My dad used to love to hunt in the Poconos when we lived in Scranton. How many deer bear wearing Kevlar vests? Huh? Not a joke. Do you realize the bullet out of an AR-15 travels five times as rapidly? 
This is the greatest debacle of all time. The bullet that comes out of an AR-15 is five times faster than any other round. Please, my eyes are bleeding right now, Joe. Stop. Please stop. That's why back in 1994, I took on the NRA and passed the assault weapons ban. For 10 years, mass shootings were down. 10 years in a row since I passed that legislation in 1994 as a, chair, as a, a senator. But in 2004, Republicans let that ban expire. What happened? Mass shootings in America tripled. Tripled. Mass shootings tripled. Tripled. The reason they went ahead and let it expire, Mr. Joe, is because they found no reason to keep it in effect. Okay? Uh, large studies were done by the FBI. The only reason that we're seeing a major increase in mass shootings is because of the drugs that you're pumping into our children. Period. It's time to ban these. It's time to ban these weapons. We did it before. We can do it again. But after seven years, we finally have a Senate-confirmed Director of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms responsible for any gun crimes for seven years. The other team would not let us appoint anyone to that incredibly important job to help local law enforcement, federal law enforcement, identify the ballistics, a whole range of things. For seven years, we finally got a pass this time out, barely. Seven years because didn't, they didn't want anybody in that job. My plan gives the Bureau the funding to hire more agents to stop gun trafficking. And by the way, there's a lot of states that don't allow you to purchase certain weapons in the state. They just cross the state line and go buy it next door. And bring it across the state line. When I say here, it's always, and <laughs> Farden had to change shirts. We had guests show up at the house. Um, one of the things that I always ask a politician, are you pro second amendment? It's a yes or no question. There is no, yes, I am a pro second amendment advocate, but, there is no but. It is what it is. There's enough laws on the books, ladies and gentlemen. Choke a horse. This guy wants to just keep filling them up. It's absolutely crazy. Here we go. Keep guns out. Of, you know what the Mexicans are? Mexico, which has real problems causing us real problems. You know what their biggest complaint is? Can't we stop gun, gun, gun trafficking across the southern border into Mexico? Let me close with this. A safer America requires all of us to uphold the rule of law. Not the rule of any one party or any one person. Let's be clear. You hear some of my friends in the other team talking about political violence and how it's necessary. Think about this now. Did any of you think, even as old as I am, you've ever been in an election where we talk about it's appropriate to use force, political violence in America? It's never appropriate. Never, period. Never, never, never. No one should be encouraged to use political violence. None whatsoever. And look. Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in if you feel like punching him. I think I'd like to take him behind the gym if I were in high school. If you were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. No, I wish you were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. I will go and take Trump out tonight. Take him out now. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president. They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. Anymore, anywhere. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Please, get up in the face of some Congress people. People will do what they do. I want to tell you, Lord Dutch. I want to tell you, Kavanaugh. You have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. If you had to be stuck in an elevator with either President Trump, Mike Pence, or Jeff Sessions, who would it be? Does one of us have to come out alive? 